November 1st, 1990, an important day for Alberta's Mady. Her Honor, the Lieutenant Governor Helen Hundley and Premier Don Getty signed letters patent, granting ownership of one and a quarter million acres to the Mady Settlement's General Council. Four acts were proclaimed. The Mady Settlement's Land Protection Act says the land's ownership can't be taken away. The Mady Settlements Act sets up their self-government. The Mady's Settlements Accord Implementation Act makes sure there's enough money to do the job. And lastly, the Alberta Constitution was amended. The rights and obligations of the new system were entrenched. For the first time, the province's eight Métis settlements have a full and complete say in how they're governed and how their resources are developed. We now join Alberta's minister responsible for Native Affairs, the Honorable Ken Rostad. Prior to giving a background of uh, the process from my perspective, I wish to acknowledge the presence of Her Honour and the Premier to be an integral part of this ceremony. I'd also like to acknowledge Randy Hardy, the President of the Federation, the Council members, the Executive, my colleagues from the Legislature who have settlements in their area, colleagues who are on the Native Task Force of our caucus, colleagues who set policy for our government and in this area and who are also an integral part. But a special introduction and welcome to those members of the settlements who have struggled through this and through your executive to the results of our legislation and of our signing today. Of course, the Métis have been here much longer than any of the rest of us. But they haven't always been treated equally. And in the early 30s, the government of Alberta thought that they should uh, start some dialogue and, and look at the situation of the Métis. And the Ewing Commission at that time thought that people who had no land and were called road allowance people <coughs> should perhaps be treated differently. And the Métis Betterment Act was passed and the colonies, or what we now call settlements, were first developed. Then in the early 80s, the Honorable Grant McEwen chaired a committee. Your president, Randy Hardy, was uh, a member of that committee that looked at a new way, a different way, how we could bring the, the settlements together with the government into today's world. And in 1985, the legislature, I was not a member of it then, but the legislature passed a unanimous resolution, Resolution 18, which declared that the colony's lands, or the settlement's lands, would be transferred to them. And in March 1987, I had the honor of attending at First Minister's Conference on Aboriginal Rights in Ottawa, where our Premier made a commitment to everyone in Canada, but most especially to the Métis, that the Métis would be under the jurisdiction of our provincial government willingly and without um, any involvement of the uh, federal government and that we would, through our Premier's resolve, transfer into effect what Resolution 18 said. I also had the honour at that time to be tasked with that duty. And I must admit, although we met innumerable times, I'm sure that Randy and I could not probably count the number of meetings we had as 
as the minister and as the uh, settlement's president, and also the innumerable meetings that were held by the settlements, uh, their uh, elected officials, uh, officials from uh, our departments. But we've made it. We, in the last session, passed four pieces of legislation which are proclaimed as of today. But in that interim, we tried at one time to put it all into one package. And it was a document about this thick, and it was called Implementation of Resolution 18. And we had everything in there from the kitchen sink to uh, absolutely everything. But we found that the people on the settlements said, we're going too far, too fast. It's becoming confusing. So we backed off again through a lot of discussion, brought forward that next June bills 64 and 65 as they were known, which looked at a framework, a framework that could have flesh put on it as we continued an understanding, a mutual uh, desire of where we should go, how fast we should go. Then the resolve was <coughs> for the next June to have final legislation and also a financial mechanism whereby we could work together to bring to fruition all of our ideals and to have the provincial government gradually back out of the scene completely so you as the Métis would have your land, your form of government, your self-determination and uh, we then only there to help when needed. Those four bills, as I mentioned, were passed in our legislature and proclaimed today. One takes the land that is being signed over today in letters patent, 1.25 million acres in eight settlements that will be signed over to the Métis of Alberta. They are enshrined in the Alberta Act, which is a part of the Constitution of Canada. One of the other acts set up the skeleton for the settlement's government. Another one of the acts sets up how the land will be treated uh, in the sense of uh, occupation and allocation. Another one of the acts sets up the financial structure and a transition commission that can help over a period of 17 years of having a partnership with the provincial government to having total control, autonomous self-determination. We are this afternoon going to participate I'm honored as the Provincial Secretary to be signing the documents. Her Honor, of course, representing Her Majesty. The Premier representing our government. Mr. Hardy representing the Settlement Council and then each of the uh, Chairmen of the Settlements as the representative of the Settlements. When that's complete, the Métis of Alberta will be what I'm sure is the proud owners of 1.25 million acres to use for your betterment and for your children. I'd like at this time to call to the podium a person that I feel I've developed a friendship with, a person who, when he speaks, is listened to a person who's been involved from day one in the Federation, Richard Potois. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. First, I would like to commend our government and our Premier, Mr. Uh, Getty, and uh, Her Honour, Ms. Hunley, 
Uh, as you all know, the older people some years back that uh, Miss Hunley was our minister and uh, she's still in the position where she's dealing with us. And I'm quite grateful about that. I think I'd also like to commend our MLA back here, Mr. Aladair, who is the Minister for Transportation. And also, I would like to commend the previous Premier, Mr. Uh, Lougheed, for introducing this in, as Mr. Rothstad said, in 1985. And a follow-up therefrom by the present government and our Premier again. We had negotiations. We had sit with Mr. Uh, Getty quite a number of times. And, of course, he wouldn't agree to everything he, we said. And on the other hand, it was vice versa. So we had to make some compromisations there. As we all say, we're not entirely satisfied with some of the documents. But on the other hand, I guess we have to compromise in some ways, some forms, because the government wasn't quite satisfied with the way it was written. Uh, with that, I would like to speak of the lands that were set aside in 1939. Now, some people say that the negotiations began in 1939, which is not true. These negotiations began in 1985 with Louis Riel. And in due course, the government at that time would not listen to Louis Riel. And of course, you all know what took place at a later time. Now, uh, we finally arrived to the day we're making great history in these settlements. And as Mr. Ross had stated here, that it's the first time it's been done. And as far as I know, it's the first time on the entire planet that this type of thing has been done. I don't know of any other country that's ever done this before. So I think uh, we, we very much appreciate it with uh, the cooperation of our present government. One thing, there was a little bit of a fallback. I think that a lot of people said that they were in the hope that this would be, this particular document would be negotiated with the federal government. And that, uh, anyway, in due course, apparently what happened, some of the premiers in the other provinces wouldn't agree with it. And I guess that's understood too, that, that they, they wouldn't agree with this becoming under the Constitution of Canada. But we're in the hope that dealing with the present government, that our land is still going to be protected. And as Randy always say, they will never take another acre away from us. And I think this is what we're hoping for. In the past, as Mr. Rostad said to me, this were the road allowance people. Now, incidentally, I seen this. I'm, you know, I'm getting up in age now. And I did see this in the Dogram Creek area east of St. Paul, where there was tar paper shacks, little shacks made of not logs, but little rails, people living right on the road around. Maybe a lot of you have never seen this, but I did. Now, I was with my dad at the time, and I asked him, what is this shack doing here? That these people are homeless, they got no land, so they got to do the best they can for themselves. We were fortunate enough to have a home and a farm, a homestead back in St. Paul. Now, I could go on and on uh, talking about the various things, the way the organization has got started. Incidentally, I'm very proud to say here and now that I initiated this back in 1969. Now, I've never expected that this was going to take place or come this far. And I feel very, very, very grateful that this had taken place at this date. From here on in, our lands that were referred to as Crown Land by our government and everyone else 
Now, we that's living in these settlements have never looked at it that way. We always said these are our lands. They were set aside for us. They're not, we're not living on crown land. That was our attitude, but the attitude of the government was entirely the opposite. So anyway, it makes me proud to stand up here tonight, or this afternoon, to speak on behalf of all the settlements. I also got to commend the, uh, the board of the settlements who elected me in this particular position. In the past, apparently, I was the first president of this organization back in 1971. I was again elected by the settlement associations at that time. Now, with that, I was just talking about, I sort of went off a bit here. I was sort of talking about these lands referred to as crown lands, this, these eight meter settlements. It's a pity that we lost four of them. But I imagine that it wasn't the fault of, of uh, ourselves here. It might have been the fault of the people that were living nearby when these settlements were set aside. If they had formed an organization, an association, and uh, they could be referred to as an association, there's a possibility that those four areas would still exist. And now, in reference to the land being called the Crown Land, and we said it was ours, being that our government said we're living on Crown Land and we're on borrowed time, we were merely occupants to these lands. Today, that's changed. Now, in reference to that, I'd like to make to our Premier a presentation with the Crown land being in mind, we'd like to leave a little bit of soil from each settlement with the Premier. At that portion, we could call Crown land, Mr. Premier. This is all from each settlement in the right on there. That's just wonderful. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you, Richard. Uh, this time I'd like to call forward uh, Walter Anderson. I'm very honored to be standing here today on this very historic day. Today, we realize the dream of securing our land. When we began this a few years ago, I've often heard uh, it could never be done. But by standing here today, I see it's going to be done. I would like to commend the government of Alberta for upholding their commitment in Resolution 18 that they may, that was made on June 3rd, 1985. We, the Métis people of the settlements in Alberta, are very happy and proud to be sitting down today and fulfilling a dream that goes back over a century. To us who live on the settlements today, it's over a 50-year dream. We have lost a lot of our friends and relatives in this long and hard struggle to accomplish what we are doing today. But we do not forget them. I think everyone in this room remembers names. Today we rec it's finally recognized ownership of our lands. As Mr. Patra said, we always considered it our lands. Today, finally, it's recognized as our lands. We have all worked very hard 
in the past, but now the real work begins because now we plan and look forward to our own destiny. I would like to also commend the executive of, of the Federation of Alberta, Maiti Federation of Alberta, all the settlement leaders who are on the council, the representatives of the government, and all the legal advisors who are involved on a job well done. There has been a lot of hardships and frustrations in the last three years, but somehow we have managed to pull together as a team and make it, make it happen. I am very proud to be part of that team. Also, there are some other people we cannot forget. We can't forget the past leaders. We can't forget the elders who has advised us and has shown us the way. We can't forget the settlement members who are back home today. The wives and families of all the leaders and executive who has been involved in the past years. They have spent many days and hours alone without their husbands and wives while this has all been done. They have supported and understood <coughs> what we were working towards. And that way we have accomplished our, our objectives. I would also like to recognize the remaining founding fathers of the Federation who had a dream, as we all know, of owning our land, calling it the Métis land. Richard Patra, who is still on the executive, Lawrence Desjardins, who is on the settlement council, Morris LaRondell, who has retired but could not attend this historic occasion. The other two founding fathers, sorry to say, has left us, left this life. So, I don't know what else to add to that. I wouldn't want to leave anyone that's out who had a part in this very historic occasion. I would like to thank my wife and all the leaders and the people who I have worked with. Thank you. Thank you, Walter. Uh, I'd like to uh, introduce Arno Goche, the Vice President of the uh, General Council, to uh, say a few words. <coughs> this is a day for all Albertans to be proud of. We have an honorable deal made with an honorable government, and I speak for the settlement people when I say that. We have now have a foundation that can build on protected land. Settlement government and secured finances. Thank you, your honorable, hon your honor, Ellen Honley, Mr. Premier, and the ministers, and all of you. And the best thing is, we do not have to block any roads or bridges. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Arnold, and I'm grateful for that. <laughs> I'd also like to, at this time, call forward uh, Larry DeMills, who's the president of the Métis Association of Alberta. These are the Métis that are living off settlement. But as I said in my introductory remarks, although uh, there are people on the settlements that will get first-hand uh, benefit, the transfer of this land to the Métis is for the Métis of Alberta. Larry? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Rostad, Your Honour, Premier, Randy. First of all, on behalf of, of the Bay Association, I'd like to congratulate you in your efforts here uh, and putting this all together and the provincial government of Alberta. It would be remiss of me not to mention the people that are, as Mr. Petra said, not to mention that the people that were here and originally started these settlements off back 50 years ago. It reminds me of a as you are aware, we all have to campaign to get into these jobs. I was on the settlement one day campaigning, and uh, one of the fellows said to me, he says, what are you going to do, he says, that, that, that can better our situation as it is right now? Well, I said, it's a very tough act to, to follow if you go back into the 30s, the kind of a land that was accumulated, and as I can see here today, brought under the Alberta Constitution. I said, I don't think anybody will top that act. It doesn't matter what I tell you. <laughs> so you have to vote for me whether, whether I can bring you as much land, if not, if not more. And I don't think anyone can. But it wasn't vo very important is what the last speaker said, is that we have taken the position of negotiations and not con confrontation. It's vitally important. Uh, I have an opportunity of seeing what goes on across Canada in terms of these types of negotiations. And I have yet to see any of them work. And I'm very happy to say that the to, to see what's happening here today and the initiative that this Premier has taken in terms of dealing with Aboriginal people is probably the most progressive a position any Premier has taken in Canada because he's not only given us positive forward movement, but he's given us absolute results. And I would like to congratulate him and his government on this positive response and, and action he's doing today. So on... Let's give it to him. And I forgot to mention and we'll continue. <laughs> <laughs> so on behalf of the Media Association, I'd like to really congratulate you people, uh, Randy, your group, on your activities and, and how you brought them forward to a successful conclusion, because it's very much in line to how we're thinking in the association in terms of how you do your own negotiations at your local level. It's, it's a very good and firm policy, and I'm sure you're going to see a lot of positive results come out of this. So on behalf of the association, I congratulate all of you. And, Good luck, and anything we can do, just give us a call. Thank you very much. Thank you, Larry. We'll now commence with the signing uh, procedures, and I'm doubly delighted because as Minister of uh, Responsible for Native Affairs, I don't get to sign the document, but as Provincial Secretary, I do. So I get to participate. Uh, after I've signed them, Her Honor, will then sign, then the Premier, then uh, Randy Hardy as President, the Executive, and the uh, Settlement Chairman. So uh, we'll <coughs> commence that. Did you hear that the Premier asked if left-handed counts? <laughs> <laughs>
behalf of the members of Get Plague. <coughs> This is easy for me, but for everybody that was before me, this is for you. It's, uh, I guess, very hard uh, to express in words the emotion inside here. Uh, it's a lot of hard work, thousands of miles behind us, hundreds of meetings. I think credit for the process, I know when we've talked to our councils yesterday, without our Lord God's help today wouldn't be possible. I think most of the credit should go to him. He's led us and guided us and softened hearts when they needed softening. That's where I'd like to start off by giving the credit to God Almighty. Uh, history lesson, uh, we've heard, uh, I guess, 50 years of history here. A little earlier, uh, some 12 decades ago is when it all started, in 1873. Our ancestors had a dream to share Canada with Indians and white people. We thought that we could live in the West in harmony with both cultures. We were caught in between. We couldn't stay in reserves. We'd go to the non-native communities and towns and we're called Indians. We go to the reserves, we're called half-breeds. Uh, <clears throat> 1885 was mentioned here by our first president, Richard. We attempted negotiations with the uh, federal government. Uh, they obviously broke down, which led to a civil war. We thought we could settle this land rights issue with guns and bullets. History proves that we thought wrong. We gave it our best shot, but we thought wrong. Roughly 15 years later, the federal government uh, passed a piece of legislation in 1905, uh, giving birth to this province. And they did it through our constitution called the Alberta Act. In this federal piece of legislation, which is also part of the 
old British North America Act, it has always been our ultimate goal to have our lands entrenched and protected through this process, which is another story and reserved for another time where we'll talk about speeches and successes with regards to that process. But anyways, times were tough in Alberta here, a uh, Great Depression hit in the 30s. We had a United Farmers political party form of government. They agreed with the elders of the settlements uh, and put forth this committee that uh, the Honorable Ken Rosted talked about. And a man by the name of Ewing headed it, visited all the northern Alberta half-breed communities. <coughs> And basically what they uh, recommended was living conditions, living standards were deplorable. With that, uh, there was a change in the government. Uh, a liberal government came into power. People more to the center of the political spectrum. Uh, back then, uh, the big five, Norris, Brady, Dion, and them, managed to convince them and putting together a piece of legislation called the Métis Population Betterment Act in 1938, which allowed for the creation of 11 half-breed farm colonies. That's what they were called back then. Years went on. <clears throat> the decade of the 50s brought Fordham to be wiped out, single stroke of a pen. Some minister just said, that's it, game over, they're gone. We had no say. And it brought men into the scene, like Richard Putra, Adrian Hope, Norris LaRondale, Lawrence Desjardins, What they did was, I guess, get people rallied up and started a grassroots movement and said, this got to stop. There's no way we can live with this. Who's next? So the birth of the Federation of Métis Settlements was in the 60s and 70s. And another historic point in our date, 1981, federal government patriated Canada's constitution. What did that mean to us? Well, it opened the doors <laughs> to a process whereby we suggested that we have a made in Alberta approach rather than working on a trilateral process between the federal provincial and other native organization levels of government, we said, we prefer a bilateral relationship and there is a process we can use. And that's to amend the 1905 Alberta Constitution. So at the time it was a unique idea. We had a government that was uh, open-minded, willing to listen, and that's where the Made in Alberta approach uh, arose. And a series of conferences were taking place at the same time, whereby all the Aboriginal groups, the Indians, Inuits, Métis, all the premiers, the prime minister of this province, were going to try to define what existing Aboriginal rights meant. And uh, the Premier of the day of Alberta resigned. They had a political convention and make a long story short, uh, long come this ex-football player, real friendly guy, and we met in Ottawa. And uh, he made a promise to us. I said, look, 
I'm positive we can work this out within provincial jurisdiction for him. We had heard a bit about him. Uh, we were told that he was a man you could trust if he gave his word to you, so we trusted him. We came back home, uh, and over a period of four years, we exchanged proposals. Eh? Then we learned from back 12 decades ago, 11 decades ago, that this, the president of the Métis Association explains guns and bullets, confrontation. It's not the way you do things in the 90s, the 80s. So we chose a series of conferences and negotiations approach. And to make another long story short, uh, we came to, I guess, an honorable compromise, we could call it, by both sides. As Walter pointed out, uh, we lost some, they lost some issues. Uh, then we tested it. We said, OK, all you leaders on eight settlements, We'll see if your people are behind us. We took it to the grassroots people <coughs> who initially gave birth to the Federation of Métis Settlements. They voted. We had an overwhelming majority agree. It was a positive sign for us. A couple of months later, in 1989, we signed a political agreement with the pre Premier. That was on our 50th anniversary. Today, that political agreement uh, has made real. Yes. It's over. It's the end of a long, hard, winding, rocky road. Now what do we have to look forward to? Well, I know our children will never again ever be ashamed to say their Métis. They can explain who they are, where they came from. We can be proud to hold our heads high. Set an example for this country, this province. Finally, I could say with all honesty, I'm proud to be an Albertan. We'll build a bright future. We'll contribute to this country. So it's the end of an old era and the start of a new one. Among us, there's a history maker today. I know the short eight years I've been involved. Just a pup, I guess, compared to Walter and Richard, and some, some of the elders. It's like Kenny and Oski said, he said it in a nutshell. It was easy to walk in and all the hard work was done. All we had to do was finish. But three, every time I've met with this man, he made you feel easy. You uh, weren't nervous, didn't figure you're in front of uh, somebody where you had to stutter, and uh, he treated us as equals, gave us respect, very open-minded. <coughs> Can't say nothing more about him, uh, our Premier, Mr. Getty. Thank you, Randy. At this time, I'd like to call forward one of my colleagues, the Honorable Rick Orman, Minister of Energy. He was uh, involved in a signing earlier this afternoon as part of this uh, accord. And Rick? Thank you, Ken. It's uh, unfair to have to follow a 
speech like Randy gave, very, very moving, very emotional. Uh, Your Honor, Mr. Premier, uh, Mr. President Randy, ladies and gentlemen, uh, earlier this afternoon, we were uh, able to sign a subsurface resource agreement that is, uh, is in place to co-manage the resources and the surface in the province of Alberta, and it applies to all of the settlements. And I want to acknowledge all of the people that worked hard to make that agreement a reality. I know talking with uh, Dr. Mellon and, and Myron Kanick, the now Deputy of, uh, Deputy of uh, Energy, that uh, there was very honest and open negotiations that occurred. And I think it's going to work to the benefit of everybody involved, the government, the Métis people, and also the uh, oil industry in this province. I'd just like to say that uh, certainly my experience being here today is that this room is full of people who said, we've heard all the arguments why we can't do this type of thing, now let's hear the arguments as to why we can do it. And to the Premier and Randy particularly, I'd like to acknowledge them. I think this is a very important day for all of Alberta. Thank you. Now it's my pleasure and my privilege to invite our Premier, the Honourable Don Getty, to express his appreciation. <coughs> As your Honour, my Cabinet colleagues, members of our Legislature, Mr. President Randy, the Chairman of the Settlements and the President Larry, the elders, and distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen. I must say I am very happy to be here with you. I tell you, thinking back, I was so sick just a little while ago, I would have been happy to be anywhere. <laughs> but uh, I'm glad that's behind me and I'm here with you on such an occasion as today. I'm very proud to be an Albertan today and I'm very proud to be the leader of this government. By the signing that we have uh, concluded today, we have granted the lands to the settlement and we have also today proclaimed new legislation. And in doing so, Albertans have shown that the needs and aspirations of our Métis people can be addressed and have been addressed through discussion and cooperation, not confrontation. Here in Alberta, we have shown what is possible when men and women of goodwill sit down together to learn from each other and to understand each other. As Randy pointed out, it didn't and it does not automatically mean that everything is easy. But if you have mutual respect, <coughs> trust, understanding, then you have a chance to find the answers and make these things possible. Alberta, under my leadership and our government, is committed to understanding the aspirations of all Native people. But we must do it together in an atmosphere of understanding, trust, respect and fairness. I trust that November the 1st, 1990, will be a day long remembered by the people of the settlements. Sixty years of hard work and determination have come to fruition. Signing today made me think of my visit to Kikino July 1st, two years ago, meeting so many of you and meeting the children there, and I thought that that signing and this signing, while it is so important that the work of the elders and the leaders 
have done. Nevertheless, the signing is for those children. It is for their future. And I hope those children never forget and remember with pride their elders and their leaders who have worked so hard and so long to make today a reality. I know that uh, I will always respect and remember the eloquence, and you've experienced it today, the eloquence and determination of Randy Hardy in pursuing a secure home for generations of Métis people in the future. I'm very happy today in that it's kind of a anniversary for me. It was in this building and with her honor exactly five years ago today, November the 1st, 1985, when I uh, was sworn in as Premier of Alberta. extremely pleased that I had an opportunity to help find a way to fulfill the aspirations of the Métis people. Because what this does, and it isn't all over, it isn't easy now, we've taken care of the paperwork, but there is thought lots of hard work still to do. But what this does, it provides the opportunity, the opportunity to take a place fully in Alberta society, to stand, as Randy has said, and be proud here in Albertan, with dignity, to build your homes, your schools, to develop into self-government and to be able to become a full member of our society and participate in every way possible in a great province. I want to thank today Her Honour, who instinctively, and she I know worked with some of you in her future, uh, past responsibilities, but who understood instinctively the importance of this event and instinctively how important it was that she make sure that she represented Her Majesty the Queen in the way she has. I want to thank my colleagues in the government who have supported my efforts in bringing together this agreement. I particularly thank Ken Rostad and his responsibility as minister, but people like Barry Mellon, Dennis Serendi, and others who have worked very, very closely together with the, all of you to fulfill the promise of this day. In closing, I just want to again repeat how proud I am to be representing all the people of Alberta today and the government of Alberta and tell you how pleased we are that we're able to share such an historic occasion with you. God bless you and let's do it together in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Premier. It's my honor to introduce the Honorable the Lieutenant Governor Helen Hundley for her remarks. Mr. Premier, Honorable Ministers, members of the Legislative Assembly, President Randy, other presidents, chairmen, distinguished guests, and ladies and gentlemen, I have found this to be a, a, a most moving afternoon, and I am so pleased to be here with all of you to share in the significance of this very historic occasion. Earlier comment was made about uh, guns and bullets, 
But as each of the presidents signed, I noticed what they did with the pen. And that made me think that the pen is indeed mightier than the sword. And congratulations to everyone who made that very clear today. What a proud day this is for Alberta, for all of us. It's the culmination of, you've heard from everyone, about years of deliberation and discussion. And I commend members of the government, the public service, and all those from the settlements for their hours of dedicated planning and for their devotion to this particular important cause. I believe that the agreements formalized today could well be examples for others to follow in similar situations throughout Canada. And I hope that our example will be useful to all of them. I know from personal experience how much the residents of the settlements have longed for their land entitlement. And some of you present here today may have discussed this matter with me, and I'm sure I'm sure I know now that I'm here and see you, I know that we have met before and that I have, in my other, one of my other careers, had the opportunity to visit many of you on your settlements. So I can, you can readily understand why I find this occasion so meaningful and so exciting and so rewarding. I can't help but think back to those who were mentioned earlier. <coughs> I think of the late Adrian Hope, whom you called and whom I considered to be your philosopher poet, the eloquent way that he expressed your dreams and desires. I wish he could be present with us today. Maybe he is. But I congratulate Alberta government's past and present and all those involved in the negotiations for their diligence, for the tolerance, <laughs> and the understanding which has made this signing possible. Without those, without diligence, without tolerance, and without understanding, we wouldn't be here today. And I'm grateful to all of you for exhibiting all those wonderful characteristics that help make this province and this country great. You have done good and noble work and I'm sitting thinking as I'm watching you sign, you know, your signatures will be in the archives of Alberta. We talk about you making history today. You really are. And your children and grandchildren will be able to go to the archives and look it up and see for themselves what a momentous thing has been accomplished. Congratulations. You have all come a long way. You had to come from different directions. And you had your meeting along the journey, a journey that lasted for many months, over many years. And so as you've traveled along and made that journey, don't be apprehensive about how far you have yet to go, because you do have far to go. But rejoice in today and in how far that you have already come. I wish you peace and prosperity as you make your respective journeys into the future. Congratulations and my very best wishes. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there's still a lot of left a lot of work left to do. We've got the legislation, the framework, the Métis have their land. We have the reaffirmation of our commitment to, together with the settlements, approach the federal government to enshrine the ownership in the Canadian Constitution and not only in the Alberta Constitution. <coughs> Over the next several years, we'll be working together again to implement the new legislation and establish the settlements as proud and equal members of the broad system of government in Alberta. And as we reflect on the name of the <coughs> road allowance people, I think we can conclude as we embark on a new road that's built on understanding and respect, 
And I'm proud to say that for the settlement members who are here today, that road will lead towards a home which will always be there for the Métis people of Alberta. We now invite everybody to a reception on the second floor, and uh, we'll have uh, Her Honour and the uh, dignitaries file out, and then everybody will uh, one floor down.